Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai, GD for Firebase, and in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how you can deploy the ML model and use it in your application. So I'm going to show for Android, but the same is true for iOS also. These APIs are available for Android and iOS. So this ML model is something like you can do some sort of inference based on the type of model. You can do OCR where you feed an image and whatever content it find in the image, it will try to read the text and show you the written text. And you can even do the image classification like dog or a cat or fruits, even object detection where you could say like uh, you want to track certain objects with a live camera feed. You can do all sort of things using ML model. So why do we need to host this model? This is the first and prime question. We can have a TF Lite model. We can just bundle it to your application and then send it to Play Store. So the major problem is like TF Lite tends to be of quite 2 MB or 5 MB, sometimes 15, sometimes 20, or sometimes 30 MB in size. Now, when this tends to increase, then this is also going to increase the app size. So how can we ensure that the app size remains as small as possible yet? We achieve all the features that we want to give to the users. So for that, there is one option to host this model somewhere, deploy it somewhere, and then as and when required, just download the model right at that time. And Firebase does exactly that. If you are new to Firebase, then Firebase is a Google platform to build high quality app in short span of time, where it offers lots of services ranging from database to ml it also includes the services for monitoring your app and even to target and grow your user audience and today we are going to talk about firebase machine learning it offers two capability one to deploy your model and another one to train your image classification model right on firebase without writing even a single line of code so let's talk about Firebase machine learning. So first of all, switch to Gradle. And if you haven't added the dependency, then add these two dependencies. ML model interpreter and TensorFlow Lite. Now, this TensorFlow Lite is just to do the inference. This is really not needed if you just want to download the model. And then you're using some other library to get the inference. But if you're using TensorFlow for the inference, that means for the prediction, then you need to add the TensorFlow Lite library also. So once you sync this, then you get the APIs to download this model. And let's see how can we download the model. So let's use the Firebase custom model API. Let's start with the function initially. Download custom model. So we can have here the Firebase custom model API. This Firebase custom model API will ask for the model name. Now this is really important. When you upload the model, then you have to give a name to your model. By this way, you identify the model or even you update the model frequently afterward. So do not change the name of it once you upload it. So say that you have given name as image classification model and then finally build it. So by this way, you have created an object where you have defined it. What model do you want to download from Firebase? Let's give this as a remote model. Now the next step is to give some sort of conditions because we are going to download it from server. Then we need to have some sort of uh, conditions like the device is either requiring Wi-Fi or connected to internet. This is first and primary thing to check out. So there are certain things which is by default available to you. So we have again Firebase model. Uh, download converter. Let me add this Firebase.
Firebase model download conditions dot builder dot now here you can specify either the device should be charging mode or it should be ideal mode or it requires device to be connected with Wi-Fi you can provide these three things here as a condition I do not want anything so I'm just building it because this is important to give so even though you do not want to specify the condition you have to initialize this with the default condition so I'm giving this as well condition and finally I can start downloading the model for that I'm going to use the firebase model manager it requires the model object which we have created using the firebase custom model builder so I'll give remote model and the conditions that's it then I can add like on success listener on failure listener or on complete listener then you can check out whether it's successful or not if not then handle the case otherwise now you know that the model got downloaded then you can do certain activities on UI this doesn't return anything it just tells you whether the model got downloaded or not one of the best thing here is that say now I have this model but this is not going to be the permanent model if I update this model then it automatically understand that a new model is available and this will download a new model for you and say that you haven't updated the model and you are running this piece of code once again then this is not going to download once again if there is changes then it downloads if there is no changes it just come to the if part directly okay so this was about downloading the model now how about getting the model because it has to store on the local disk so let's see how we can read this so say I have firebase model manager dot get instance this time instead of download what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, get this model so I'll use get latest model file here it again requires the remote model object that's it now you can add on complete listener and if it's successful then it will give you the file path along with the file so here you will get this model file it dot result is going to give you the file and that is your tf light file else you can handle the case based on your requirement now one thing here is that when to call this download API and when to call this get latest model file so what you could do is like there is another API to check whether this model is available or not so we have firebase model manager or get instance dot is model available where you could again give the remote model and this is going to tell you whether you have the model available on the disk or not available on disk else not available on disk So these are three important APIs. So what you can do is that rather than having it all to a single method, 
take this out so that you can divide this method into different different methods and based on your condition you could use them so we'll use like private m remote model let me make it by lazy so that whenever i need it then only this gets initialized otherwise no point of initializing it now say that at every on create i want to check for the model then i could call this like download custom model now as i said if model is already available if it is downloaded it will come to the if block immediately it will not download the model over and over so there is no point of downloading the same model over and over so this intelligence is already added from the sdk side now the next part is to access the model so you could say something like private fun access model and here you can add this api where once you are sure that the model is downloaded then you could do the inference and remote model so these are the two important apis one is to download and another one is to get the latest model file and you can check whether the model is downloaded or not so this was all about downloading the model from the firebase how about deploying it so as i said it, there is a very easy way to do this so we can deploy the model right from a python script another approach is like the way you have created the firebase project you can again go back to firebase open firebase machine learning and then upload the model there but this requires a route like you need to go to the firebase and keep on uploading the model how about automating this so that once your model is ready you want to deploy it then and there so you can write all those things right in the python file let me show you how to do this so first of all get the private key json file which will get from the firebase because by this way it's going to authenticate with your firebase project then it also requires the default storage bucket so if you switch to the firebase storage it's going to give you the default storage location which will look like something your project name dot appspot.com so this is going to be common this front part will change so once you do this two things the next is about the tf light gcs model source where you give the model file name now this model file name is nothing but the model which you want to upload this is different than what we are going to use here this this is different so this is tf light model and here display name so this has to be same as what you are specifying here in the remote model once you give this then just create this model publish the model and that's it once you publish it you'll get a model id keep a note of it because this is really important to update your model in the subsequent steps if you lose this then it is really difficult to update the model once again so now you have the model id so this is the script to deploy the model initially now if you want to update the model again same thing get the json and provide the storage path so this part remains same as earlier Uh, the only change here is that rather than creating a new model now you are getting the model this model is same as what you have uploaded before with some id you have to give that id again whatever tf light model now you want to upload give the model here if it is not in the same file path as this python script then give you the full path finally the display name remember 
to give exact same name here because if you are changing the name here then this is going to change the name on the firebase also eventually that will lead to the app crash or a model itself will not be available to you so you're not able to uh, infer anything if you want to give tag so that you could remember that which version is going on then you can also add tag it's completely optional and finally update the model earlier it was publish model now here it is update model that's it just by this way you can now deploy the ml model and use the ml model in your android or ios application so i hope this might be useful for you to understand about how you can deploy and use tf light model i have also given an article link in the description where you can find how to get this json file because this is really important without getting this json file you're not able to communicate with the firebase because here you're not adding any sort of authentication so it requires a mean to communicate with the firebase and this certificate is going to do that so in the article i have mentioned it how you can get this json file so that's it in this video uh, there are more tutorials coming soon on firebase topics and on ml topics also so if you haven't subscribed this channel then please do hit the subscribe button like the video and share it with your friends thank you and stay tuned